Forsytes take much the same attitude towards Parliament as they do towards the Church of England. They are bound to approve of such aged and respectable institutions. But because there's no money to be made out of religion or politics, they can't take either of them seriously. So when my father-in-law visited the house, it was not to hear me or anyone else make speeches, but to try once more to keep the Ferrer case out of court. Sir Alexander McGowan. Mr. Forsythe? Hmm. What do you want? This affair can't be any more agreeable to you than it is to me. Are you the individual who applied the word traitorous to the lady I'm engaged to? That is so. Then I don't see how you have the impudence to face me. I spoke under the provocation of hearing your fiancé call my daughter a snob in her own house. And do you want this petty affair made public? If you and your daughter think you can get away with calling Miss Ferrer a snake, a traitorous, and an immoral person, you're more mistaken than you ever were in your life. Hmm. An unqualified apology that her counsel can announce in court is your only way out. And that you won't get. A mutual regret is another thing. Hmm. As to the question of damages, I, I don't know. Not damages. Oh, very well. I think you'll be sorry. What the devil do you mean, sir? Hmm? You'll find out by the end of next week, unless you revise your views in the meantime. If it comes into court, we shall justify. You'd better look out what you say in court. In court, we pay no attention to bullies. Yes. Pity I'm not your age. Ah, Forsyth. Uh, allow me to introduce you, Marquis of Shropshire. Oh, oh, how do you do? Forsyth, how do you do? Any relation of the tea man? Uh, he was my uncle Julian. Admirable. No tea like it these days. <laughs> know anything of electricity? Uh, the Marquis wants everything electrified. Oh. Especially this place. <laughs> Have you got any land? All I want. Wise fella. Cows? A few. Electrify them. I beg your pardon? Take it from me, Forsyth. The milkmaid is dead. In 20 years, earlier if I have my way, every cow in England will be milked by electricity. Oh, indeed. Mm, I, I myself have invented a machine. <laughs> yes, 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 quite. Uh, Marquis. Yes, yes, uh, yes. What is it, young Bond? Uh, you remember my telling you about your granddaughter and my daughter-in-law? Uh, Forsyth here is her father. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh. Uh, something to do with lions? Hmm? Lion hunters. Oh. A libel, was yes. it? Mm. Yes, I remember in 1870, my aunt. Oh, yes, yes, a most interesting case. Yes, there, yes. libels but, uh, had some flavour in those days. The words complained of were, her crinoline covers her considerable obliquity. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants a scandal, Marquis. Could you put in a word? Well, I see from the papers that my granddaughter is marrying a man called McGowan, a member of this house. Would he be about? Yes, I've just seen him. It wasn't a very pleasant interview. A weirdo to deadlock. Oh. Oh, very well. I'll... Uh, I'll ask Marjorie to breakfast. Ah. I dislike scandals. Well, I'm off to the Piers Gallery. You coming, Mont? Yes, sir. Parsham's Railway Electrification Bill. Oh. Goodbye, Forsyth. Oh, goodbye. Don't forget what I told you. Electrify your cows. <laughs> I wish it would invite Fleur to breakfast as well. There are two parties to this quarrel. Yes, in her present mood, she wouldn't come. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, if you're wanting these, yeah. uh, cuttings of letters from the oh. protagonist. Oh, that's useful. Oh, Walker did his job well. They've gone for him hip and thigh. The ah. general consensus is that Canthar is great art, with mm. a capital A. Mm. And what has great art to do with morality? Ah. When will England recognize genius? <laughs> well, uh, as they say, so long. Here, madam, in the drawing room. Oh, thank you. Please. Could you take these? Is Mr. Mont home? Not yet, madam. He telephoned to say he was at Bethnal Green, but wouldn't be late. I see, thanks. Oh, here you are, my dear. I'm just writing a note to Foskerson. Fos oh, the barrister? Yeah. I shall take Michael to see him. No settlement? Oh, it's extremely unlikely. Oh, oh by the way, tell me, uh, that uh, young American chap, uh, what's his name, Wilmot, uh, 
You seen him? I mean, we must lose him. There's no chance there, Ducky, but I have seen him. What? In fact, I'm just back from seeing him at the Langham Hotel. What? He's been terribly ill. What's that? Well, why should you come? That's all, poor boy. But ill? Pneumonia. Yeah. It's all right. It isn't catching. Oh, but Fleur... But he's it... going to get well, thank goodness. It's all right. I was chaperoned at every visit by an elderly nurse. Hmm. Michael know about these visits? Not yet. Why not? Well, I didn't feel like telling him. Feel like, but don't you realize that position it puts you in for running off to a young man's bedside I know, without darling, a husband's but he knowledge. was terribly ill. Well, so are lots and of besides, people. Besides, he was desperately in love with somebody else. Who? Marjorie Ferrer. Well, that's just what? a. It's all over. Oh, I don't know. You, you come and go, flippity gibbets the lot of you. Have you quarrelled with Michael that you don't tell him things? No, not a quarrel. Only he doesn't tell me things. What sort of things? Well, how should I know, Ducky? Hmm. Well, would Michael object to these uh, visits to Wilmot? Of course not. He'd have minded if I hadn't. I think he rather likes Francis. Hmm. Well, either you or he or both is going to have to tell a lie and say that he did know about the visits. Why? Well, I will because, well, for all I know, you've been followed. What? Has Marjorie been followed? Yes. Yes. Well, I decided it would be best to take every precaution and... How delightful. That'll be Michael. Hello, darling. Hello, Michael. How is Beth McGree? Oh, slummy. <laughs> but this place, Sunshine House. Do you know, three old houses locked into one, and the yard's made into a playground for the children. Fun little objects for them. Thin, deplorable accents, but sharp as needles. You ought to come down there with me. Perhaps I will. What are they doing there? On tuppence. Absolutely frustrating. And Nora Curfew, what's oh, she yes, done? Yes, Nora Curfew. She lives for everybody but herself, doesn't she? Yes, yes, she does. The new woman. One's getting clean out of fashion. What's the matter, Fleur? Nothing. There is. Well, one gets a bit fed up with being left out. Left out? Yes, as if one was fit for nothing but. Well, kit and looking appetizing. Fleur, any time you like to go shares in any mortal thing. I only have to ask. Thank you. What is it, Fleur? Please tell me. My dear boy, I've told you. Nothing. Have you had tea? Yes. Fleur? It's kit's bedtime. Do you want to come up? Of course. Oh, Dad's here. Perhaps you should entertain him. Tell him about Bethnal Green. Michael. Is the new woman dramatic? I don't quite follow you. Good God. Uh, have you got a stamp? Hmm? Yes, I think so. What's the matter with Fleur? Is something? Mm, thank you. She says you don't tell her things. Well, I'd be only too glad to, sir, but I don't think she's interested. She doesn't feel that public affairs matter. Public? I meant private. Private affairs? Well, there aren't any. Do you mean she thinks there are? How should I know? Well, you can put that out of your head. And hers. Yes, well, she's been seeing this uh, Wilmot chap at, uh, at the Langham. He's got pneumonia. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. He'll recover. And she ought to have told you. And she would have done if you'd been more open with her. You know, wives are funny. They, well, they like to be talked to. I know, sir. But it's my profession now to worry about the state of the country and the people and things like that. But to Fleur, it's, well, it's a stunt. I can understand that. But you see, the keener I get, the more afraid I am of boring her. Hmm? That sort of way, she's jealous. Jealous? Hmm. Hmm. Well, you better not let it go on. It's trivial. I'm not so sure, sir. Well, if there's a war, men have to leave their wives. Well, it's different, I mean, when the country's in danger. Well, of isn't course it in danger now? Oh, don't exaggerate. Things aren't too bad. The pound's going up. 
It doesn't matter what you tell Fleur, as long as you tell her something. She's intelligent, sir. Yes. Well, that's but national affairs are too remote. I mean, you can't expect a woman to be interested in them. Quite a lot of women are. No, it's blue stockings. Oh, no, sir. <laughs> Besides, they all wear nude. Oh, those things. Yes, you put a tax on stockings and see what happens. I'll suggest it. Yeah. Well, I'm off to my sister's. Now, if you think anybody's going to take this fogatism business seriously, you're in for a disappointment. So everybody tells me. That's why I've stopped worrying Fleur about it. I don't like cold water at home as well as abroad. Oh, thank you. Oh, if you, uh, if you want my advice, I should drop it. There's a mists aren't trusted in this country. <laughs> well, why don't you take up something practical, like the uh, state of the traffic or well, there's plenty of postage. Oh, by the way, uh, if you're asked, say you knew all about Fleur's visits to Wilmot. Oh, certainly I will. Husband and wife are one, eh? Yes. Do you think it will come into court? I can't tell. I expect so. <clears throat> Want to see that Scotch chap? Good Lord. Oh, he's a fire eater. What do you want to go hitting him on the nose well, for? Well, he gave me a thick ear first. Yes, but you must have said something. I called him a dirty dog. Yeah, well... Well, he suggested a corrupt motive for my speech. Your speech. You've got to get it into your head that nothing you say or do can make any difference. Then what's the good of my being in Parliament, sir? Keep a level head and do no more than you're obliged to. Oh, yes, and how do you decide how much that is? Common sense. Well, the country's like a tree. You can keep it in trim, but you can't go on digging it up just to look at the roots. Goodbye. Eggs, grandfather, or fish? Help yourself. I'll roam about and peck a bit. So, you're going to be married. Is that fortunate? People say so. He's in Parliament, I see. What's all this about a libel? It wouldn't interest you. I disagree. Why do you want to wash linen in court, eh? I don't. Aren't you the plaintiff? Yes. What did she say about you? I haven't any morals. Coffee. Thank you. Have you? As much as most people. <laughs> Anything else? That I'm a snake of the first water. Oh, dear. What made her say that? I called her a snob, which she is. Ah, that cuts deep, you know. I want you to remember something, Marjorie. We have no power these days, no divinity, but we still stand for something. I tried to make it up, but she wouldn't. I see. Tell me then, are you happy about yourself? No. Who is? Ah, quite, <laughs> quite so. Indeed, yes. You're going to be very well off, I hear. That means power. It's worth using well. This Scotsman, do you like him? At times. With your hair, you must be careful. Red hair can be extraordinarily valuable on occasion. At the Eaton and Harrow match, or for speaking after dinner, but don't let it run away with you after you're married. <laughs> Can't you both say you're sorry? Why put money into lawyers' pockets, eh? She won't unless I do, and vice versa. Well, I dislike scandal, Marjorie. Anything like that these days? Another nail in our coffin? Well, I'll speak to Alec, if you like. Do. Where are you going to live? Belgrave Square. He's got a place in Scotland, too. Have your kitchens electrified? <laughs> It saves the cook's temper. I get very equable food. You seem to, Grandfather. I'm enjoying my eggs. Good. Now, what about a wedding present? Old lace? Oh, no, please, dear. Nobody's wearing lace. Oh, pity. I have a superfluity of old lace and practically nothing else. <laughs> Just give me your blessing. Very well. Now, that's an idea. I wonder if I could sell blessings. You know, like pardons and indulgences. <laughs> Why not, eh? Why not? 
Have some marmalade. still refuse to apologize? Yes, unless there's an expression of regret on the other side. And that isn't forthcoming? Apparently not. Then there's a point we have to consider. I understand, from Mr. Forsyth, that your wife has been shadowed. Well, she thinks so. And it's I... probably true. I'm also told, forgive me, uh, that she's been visiting a young American at his hotel. Yes, a friend of mine. Ah. He's been very ill, pneumonia. Quite so. And you knew and approved of these visits? Certainly, yes. yes. All right, gives me a free hand. Miss Ferrer and Mr. Green. Interesting, very. They're not totally conclusive. Sir James, I'd rather you didn't drag in Miss Ferrer's private life. No doubt. But do you or do you not wish me to win this case? Hmm? <laughs> I have absolutely nothing to say. Yes. yes. Well, that had to do. Have you ever been in court before? No. Hmm. Well, the great thing to remember is uh, don't pay any attention to anybody, especially the jury. Now, if you look at them, don't smile. Why? Aren't they safe? You might do better sit on your left. By the way, have you and he got over that business of uh, not telling each other things? Yes. Good. Well, he's very fond of you, you know. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. If you'll please wait here, I'll, uh, I'll see when we're on. Thank you. Yes. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Senator White. Yes. Uh, morning. Morning, too. Why don't we settle now, Alec? There's still time. If they'll apologize, we will. <laughs> what about me? I don't want to stand up there and shot at. Who can play at that game? Perhaps. You better hedge, Alec. You may take a toss over me. I believe in you. More than you believe in yourself. All right, then. Let it rip. At least we'll know where we all stand. Now oh, then, Mr. Green, let us have this quite clear. You were standing close to Miss Fellow when Mr. Forsythe came up to her. Yes. What did you hear Mr. Forsythe say to her? He said, you are a traitress, kindly withdraw. Or words to that effect. To that effect? Are you positive he used the word traitress? Oh, yes. Positive. Thank you, Mr. Green. I understand, Mr. Green, that you're friendly to both parties in this action. Yes. Yes, I am. Then this scene we've heard described, it must have embarrassed you. Well, yes, in a way. Not much. Are you accustomed to that sort of thing? Well, not, not in London drawing rooms, I must say. Where then? Oh, in studios. Places where artists meet and talk. Among oh, temperamental people. Ah, yes. Uh, you are an artist yourself, are you not? Uh, of some repute, I believe. Thank you. Not at all. Uh, so that when you hear words like snob and traitress and liar banded about among your friends, you accept it as normal behaviour? Well, among my friends, yes. But these people are your friends. Uh, is Miss Ferrer an artist? She could be. She has talent. And Mr Forsythe? Oh, good Lord, no. But I must say he knows a picture when he sees one. So you're saying it is acceptable for Miss Ferrer to call her hostess a snob and Mr. Forsythe a liar, but not acceptable for Mr. Forsythe to call Miss Ferrer a traitress? I said nothing of the sort. Yet you I... implied, do you not, by coming here as a witness for the plaintiff? The witness was subpoenaed. He had to come. Uh, then let me put this to you. After the, uh, the incident, uh, Miss Ferrer left the house. Yes. And you? Well, I went with her, of course. Of course. Uh, because you agreed with her remarks? Well, certainly not. I went with her because when I take a lady to a party, I expect to see her home. So you didn't agree with her remarks? The jury will no doubt take note of that. Uh, just two more questions, Mr. Green. Uh, have you seen Miss Ferrer since that unfortunate party? Yes. Many times? Several times. So you remain on good terms? Certainly. And have you seen Mr. and Mrs. Mont? No. Never? No. That's very interesting. Thank you, Mr. Green. I agree with my learned friend. It is interesting. You have not been to the Monts since the quarrel. No. May I ask why not? Because I haven't been invited. Oh. 
I'm sure the jury will take note of that. Thank you, Mr. Green. That is all. Poor old Aubrey. See, it's fault. It was on her side. Yes, but he didn't have to bully the poor chap. Yeah. Very well done. Very professional. I'm glad we briefed him. I call the plaintiff, my lord. Call Miss Marjorie Farrer. Oh, pardon me, officer. Is this courtroom number two? Yes, sir. Can I get in there, please? Well, it's pretty crowded. I'd be very grateful. Well, very well, sir. Now, Miss Ferrar, you told my learned friend that you had no animus against Mrs. Mott. Look at this marked paragraph in the evening sun of October the 3rd. Did you write that? Yes, I wrote it. It ends thus. The enterprising little lady is losing no chance of building up her salon on the curiosity which ever surrounds any buccaneering in politics. Is the reference to Mrs. Mont? Yes. Not very nice, is it? Of a friend. I don't see any harm in it. The sort of thing, in fact, you'd like written about yourself? The sort of thing I should expect if I were doing the same thing. Oh, that's not quite an answer. And it, let me put it like this. The sort of thing your father would like to read about you, is it? My father wouldn't read that column. Then it may surprise you to hear that Mrs. Mont's father did. Do you write many of these cheery little paragraphs about your friends? Not many. Every now and then, eh? And do they remain your friends? In society, it's not easy to know who's a friend and who isn't. I quite agree, Miss Ferrer. You've admitted making one or two critical remarks concerning Mrs. Mont in her own house. Do you go to many houses and talk disparagingly of your hostess? No. In any case, I don't expect the eavesdropped. I see. So long as you're not found out, it's all right, eh? No, that... Now, on this first Wednesday in October last, at Mrs. Mott's, did you use the word snob of your hostess? I don't think so. Do you suggest that Mr. Forsythe invented the word snob? I suggest he was mistaken. Not a nice word, is it? Snob. Was there any other reason why he should call you a traitress? My remarks weren't meant for him. I don't remember exactly what I said. Well, we shall have Mr. Forsythe in the box to refresh your memory. But I put it to you that you called her a snob, not once but I twice you, during I that little remember. conversation. Yet he it seems, Miss Ferrer, that you object to others saying nasty things about you in return. Who advised you to bring this action? My father, first, and then my fiancé. Sir Alexander McGowan. Does he move in the same circles as you? No, he moves in parliamentary circles. Exactly. And he wouldn't know, would he? The canons of conduct that rule in your circle. No circles are as definite as that. Always willing to learn, Miss Ferrer. But tell me. Do you know what Sir Alexander's parliamentary friends think about conduct and morality? I can guess. Are you suggesting... We all know the meaning of the word stuffy. Are, are public men stuffier than you? They may say they are. You think them hypocrites? I don't think anything at all about them. Though you're going to marry one. You're complaining of the words, she hasn't a moral about her. Have you read this novel, Campar? I think so. Don't you know? I've skimmed it. Taken off the cream, eh? Read it sufficiently to form an opinion. Yes. <clears throat> Would you agree with the view of it expressed in this letter to a journal? The book breaks through the British stuffiness which condemns any frank work of art, and a good thing too. Is it a good thing? Yes. I hate Grundyism. It is undoubtedly literature. The word is written with a large L. Should you say it was? Literature, yes. Not great literature, perhaps. But it ought to be published. I don't see why not. You know that it is not published in England. Yes. But it ought to be. It isn't everybody's sort of... Book. Don't evade the question, please. In your opinion, ought this novel Canthar to be published in England? Take your time, Miss Ferrer. <clears throat> yes. I think literature should be free. You wouldn't sympathise with its suppression if it were no. published? And your view would be shared by most of your own associates? I should hope so. A contrary opinion would be stuffy, wouldn't it? If you like to call it so, it's not my word. What is your word, Miss Ferrer? I think I generally say gaga. <laughs> Do you know, I'm afraid the court will require a little elaboration of that. Not for me, Sir James. I am perfectly familiar with the word. It means in your dotage. The bench is omniscient, my lord. Then anyone, Miss Ferrer, who didn't share your opinion in the matter of this book, 
uh, would be Gaga. Aesthetically. Ah. I thought we should arrive at that word. But when a man's theme in a book is extreme promiscuity, depicted with all due emphasis, that wouldn't have any practical effect on his readers, however young. I can't say about other people. It wouldn't have any effect on me. You are emancipated, in fact. I suppose so. And therefore, you do not believe in current morality. I don't know what you mean by current morality. I will tell you, Miss Farrar. I should say, for instance, it was current morality that women should not have liaisons before they're married. And, of course, should not have them after. What about men? Thank you. I was coming to men. And the men should at least not have them after. I wouldn't say that was current morality at all. Do I understand you to imply that, in your view, it is moral for women to have liaisons before they are married? And uh, for men and women to have them after? I think it's current morality, my lord. I am not asking you about current morality. I am asking whether, in your view, it is moral. I think many people think it's all right who don't say so yet. Answer my question, please. Do you say it's all right? It depends. On what? On, on circumstances, environment, temperament, on all sorts of things. Would it be all right for you? I can't answer that question, my lord. You mean you don't want to? I mean, I don't know. Very well. Go on, Sir James. So, Miss Ferrar, according to you, there is no harm in a book like Camphar. There ought to be none. You mean if we were all as aesthetically cultured as you? But are we? No. Then there is harm. But you wouldn't mind that harm being done. No, that's not... I don't propose, my lord, to read from this very unpleasant novel. We've gone to the considerable expense of buying copies, and I shall ask that during the luncheon interval the jury may read some dozen marked passages. Have you a copy for me, Sir James? Yes, my lord. And for Mr. Bullfrey? Yes. <laughs> if there's any laughter, I shall have the court cleared. Go on, Sir James. Do you remember a play called The Plain Dealer by Wycherley, given at a matinee on January the 7th last? Did you play in that the part of Olivia? Yes. Is it the part of a modest woman? No. Is it towards the end extremely immodest? I allude to the dark scene. I wouldn't say extremely. Anyway, you felt no hesitation about undertaking and playing the part. A little thing like that didn't worry you. I don't see why it should. If it did, I wouldn't act. You don't act for money? No, for pleasure. Then, of course, you can refuse any part you like. Well, if I did, I shouldn't have many offers. Don't quibble, please. You took the part of Olivia, not for money, but for pleasure. You enjoyed playing it. Pretty well. I'm afraid I shall have to ask the jury, my lord, to run their eyes over the dark scene in The Plain Dealer. Are you saying, Sir James, that a woman who plays an immoral part is not moral? That would disperse a great many excellent reputations. No, my lord. I'm saying that here is a young lady, so jealous of her good name in the eyes of the world, that she brings a libel action, because someone has said in a private letter that she hasn't a moral about her. And at the same time, she's reading and approving books like this Canthar, playing parts like that of Olivia in The Plain Dealer, and as I submit, living in a section of society that really doesn't know the meaning of the word morals. It looks upon morals, in fact, rather as we look upon reasons. It's my contention, my lord, that the saying in my client's letter, she hasn't a moral about her, is rather a compliment to the plaintiff than otherwise. Do you mean it was intended as a compliment? No, my lord. Well, you wish the jury to read the scene. I'm afraid you're going to have a busy luncheon, gentlemen. Go on, Sir James. My learned friend has made a point of the fact that you are engaged to a wealthy and highly respected member of Parliament. How long have you been engaged to him? Six months. You have no secrets from him, I suppose. Why should I answer that? Yes, Sir James, why should she? I'm quite content to leave it at her reluctance, my lord. Your engagement was not made public until January, was it? No. Did you, in early January, become aware that you were not likely to get any sum in settlement of this suit? I believe I was told an offer had been withdrawn. Do you know why? Yes. Because Mrs. Mont wouldn't give the apology I asked. Exactly. Me. And was it a coincidence that you thereupon made up your mind to marry Sir Alexander McGowan? Coincidence? I mean the announcement of your engagement, you know. It had nothing to do with this case. Indeed. Now, Miss Ferrer, you like to stand up for your views, I hope. Let me put your philosophy to you in a nutshell. You believe, don't you, in the full expression of your personality. It'd be your duty, wouldn't it, to break through any convention, I don't say law, but any so-called moral convention that cramped you. I never said I had a philosophy. Don't run away from me, please. I'm not in the habit of running away. I'm so glad of that. 
You believe in being the sole judge of your own conduct? Yes. In other words, so long as you don't break the actual law, you think and do as you like, eh? One doesn't always act up to one's principles. Quite so, but among your associates, it is a principle, isn't it, to judge for yourselves and go your own ways without regard to convention. More or less. And living in that circle with that belief, you have the effrontery to think the words she hasn't a moral about her entitle you to damages. I have morals. They may not be yours, they may be just as good, perhaps better. At least I'm not a hypocrite. We'll leave my morals out of the question, Miss Ferrar. But we'll go a little further into what you say are yours. In your own words, it depends on temperament, circumstances, environment, whether you conform to morality or not. Answer, please. Yes. Very good. His Lordship put a general question to you which you did not feel able to answer. I shall put it in a way that will be easier for you. Whether or no it was right for you to have one, have you, in fact, had a liaison? Take your time, Miss Ferrar. You know what a liaison is, of course. For God's sake, we must finish this. I consider your question insulting. Come, Miss Ferrar. After your own words, after what well, you said. Well, I shall... can't answer it. You won't answer it? No. Thank you, Miss Ferrar. I shall break for lunch now, Mr. Wolfram. Be upstanding in court. Well? An unfortunate refusal, Miss Ferrer. Would you have preferred me to answer? That would depend on the answer you gave. Did you expect me to lie? Frankly, Miss Ferrer, I did. <laughs> Gallant, Mr. Settlewhite. Sir Alexander would have believed me. Then why didn't you lie? You wouldn't understand if I told you. I dare say. However, you have destroyed your case. And we should settle it immediately if that's possible. Would you like to make the difference to me? Can I get out quietly? Yes, if you go right, go down those stairs. He should never have asked that question. We agreed that he shouldn't. And our counsel, why didn't he help? Well, I was only too glad to get her out of the box. The judge would have asked her the question himself in a moment. The whole thing's a complete fiasco. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Then we've won. I'm not so sure. What do you mean? We shall be forgiven, that's all. Why didn't you tell a whopper and have done with it? Oh, Marjorie. I felt sorry for her. You feel sorry for a crocodile? Why shall we be forgiven? Because all the drama was on her side. Besides her engagement. Oh, will you break it off? Well, of course. If he does, she'll get sympathy. If he doesn't, he will. But either way, we shan't. Besides, didn't she stand up for what we all really believe in? Well, speak for yourself. Don't we talk of everyone being free? Yes. But is there any connection between what we do and what we say? No. Well, as I thought, they've jumped at a settlement, each side paying their own costs. Mm -hmm. That's more than they deserve, but we've won a moral victory. Moral? Well, Alec. Where have you been? I walked through the park. Tell me the truth, Marjorie. I must have the truth. In return for your adventures, I'll tell you mine. For God's sake! I've been going through hell. Who was it who knew me better than I knew myself? 
Then it's true. Yes. Why not? Who was he? Oh, no. I can't tell you that. How many affairs have you had? No, that's quite different. It would be. Because I'm in love with you. Ah. Yes, I dare say that does make a difference. Who was it? That American? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Poor boy. <laughs> How long did it last? Nearly a year. My God. Yes, well, uh, she's excited. Yes. It's, it's natural. Well, give her a Sidlitz powder. Hmm? And I suggest an early night. There's no hope of that, I'm afraid. Hmm? We're going out to a party at Mrs. McGussie's. Oh, who's she when she's at home? Oh, twice a widow, oodles of money. Hmm. You don't just go there to meet. You go there to meet someone. Huh? Oh. Oh, always someone distinguished. This week, the president of Nicaragua. Next week, Harry Lauder. Yes. Tonight, it's that great Italian violinist, Luigi Sforza. Just back from his world tour. In one year, he's played more music in more countries than any previous traveling fiddler. I've never heard of him. Is he any good? Oh, as a musician, only moderate, but as an athlete, incomparable. Yeah. Well, as I say, don't keep her up all night. She's tired. Mm. Why doesn't she come down to Maple Durham? Hmm? Yes, she should. Yes, yeah, tell her to bring Kit. All right, I will. Well, goodbye, sir. Coming. Francis? I was in that courtroom today. Were you indeed? Come in. I thought you were finished with that fool business. I'm sailing for the States tomorrow. Seems like a good idea. I was wondering if maybe you wanted to see me. If you were in court. That damnable business. Good entertainment, though, to like that sort of thing. I'm curious why you should want to see me. Why did you come? Well, Marjorie, uh, I thought... You think I owe you something. Yes, well, perhaps you're right. I did treat you very badly. No? Oh, for heaven's sake, Francis, chivalry. Just old-fashioned American chivalry. <laughs> now, that's really funny. <laughs> when the lawyer asked the question about a, about a love affair... Oh, no, not that again, please. I wondered if you didn't... Answer it because of me. Because... My dear boy, don't you know what an affair is? Haven't you heard? I see I shouldn't have come. No, perhaps not. Anyway, as you can imagine, I'm freelance again now. Oh, all right. Well, for heaven's sake, go away. I'm fed up. Mr. and Mrs. George Coote. Well, here we go, darling. Look, don't shake hands with more Whatever you do, it'll hurt like the devil. Oh, since Michael, I want to meet him. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Michael Mont. Mr. and Mrs. Michael Mont. Yes. Sure. How do you do? Uh, Hello, Mrs. McGussie. How are you? Nice to see you. Mr. and Mrs. Gordon James. <laughs> what price the fat stock show? Oh, thank you. Oh, nice. Why, Bart? This isn't like you, mixing with the rich and famous. Well, you told me you were coming. I wanted a word with you. The case is ended, I see. Yes, amid the shouts of the multitude. Did you see the evening papers? I did. Oh, Bart, we should have settled up and dropped the whole thing. You're right. Dropping things is the answer. If I'd dropped baronetcy in time, I could have made a good contortionist. It's too late now. 
Fritz, I'm afraid so. But now the case is over, have you a tip to give us? When victorious, lie doggo. You've been labelled moralists. May recoil on you. That's what I feel. <laughs> Fleur's father said it was my hitting McGowan on the boco that really brought the case into court. <laughs> uh, the tax on luxury. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Marjorie Ferrer. Isn't that your late adversary? Yes. I must go to Fleur. So must I. Marjorie? <laughs> Sir Alexander McGowan! Thank you. Your fiancé is just coming. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Spencer. Oh, hello, Tony. How are you? Shall we go? Shall we go? If I may. <laughs> Hello. Well, Alex. Tell me everything now. You want to revel in it? I'm married still. Alex. I'm not going out of my death for It was absurd, isn't it? Are you saying that you're still in love with that? Alec, no. I can't marry I'm sorry, really. I would like to have paid up if I could. Well, are you sure you won't have a nightcap or something about it? No, thank you, my boy. Cab's waiting. So is my bed. <laughs> Don't let her take it to heart. Don't let her. As for you, Michael, ride out the storm. Everything passes. Night. Good night, Bart.
don't care a bit, do you? For myself, not a bit, ma'am. Well, you've still got Fogartism and Bethnal Green. Fleur, if you care, I care a lot. If I care? You think I'm a snob to care? <laughs> I know you like to have people around you. And you want them to think well of you. That isn't being a snob. Whatever it is, you don't admire I it. admire you, Fleur. No. I admire you much more than you admire me. You desire me. You admire Nora Curfew. Oh, for... Nora Curfew could snuff out tomorrow. Well, not her, then, but what she stands for, all that I'm not. A selfless devotion to others. I'm incapable of devotion. What about Kit? He's part of me. I'm devoted to myself, that's all. Morbid, darling. I see too clearly to be morbid. Take me round the world. And leave Kit? Well, now's the time. He's too young to mind. You mean now? Next but week. I can't, Fleur. What? When the house rises in August. No, but no. that's only five months away. Five months? What's the feeling that I've got here? You don't understand, Michael. I've had six months of it already. I'm. Well, I'm, I'm down and out. Do you know when you really could help me? All you care about is your idiotic. Fleur, it's also petty. petty. To mind being a failure. Oh, all you've got to do is show them you don't give a damn and they'll come buzzing round like a lot of flies. Don't run away, Fleur. It's not that. It's only that I don't try for the same prize twice. Very well. I'll stay and be laughed at. I know. You think my work is nothing, a charade, but there it is. I've put my hand to it. How can I, honestly? Fleur, darling. I know it's been hell for you, but tomorrow it 